Hello, my name is Octavian and I represent the Pupurangi Nature Sanctuary, a community group which is based on the West Coast. Today I would like to tell you about our nature sanctuary, how it came about, the kind of activities that we uh, performed there, and I will end by sharing with you some of the results that we had in the last 10 years that we've been operating. I haven't done much research on this, but I'm pretty sure that our project is one of the few projects that uh, came to life due to one person's desire to make their own olive oil. About 15 years ago, I was living in Wellington, and I had this dream about growing olive trees and pressing my own olives to make olive oil. And what better place to do it than in Northland, the warm part of New Zealand, right? And uh, I was lucky enough to find a piece of land that nobody wanted. It's about 100 hectares of regenerating bush and a couple of hectares of uh, north-facing um, clearing. And um, I bought it sometimes in, in wintertime, in June or something like that. As most of you know, the best place to come up with wild dreams is as far as possible from the place where the wild dreams are meant to happen. And this is exactly what I did for six months. While I was uh, working in Wellington, I came up with this plan of what trees to plant and how I'm going to plant them and how everything is going to be amazing. And at Christmas time, I uh, came to visit my land and uh, within half an hour of being there, I uh, met one of my neighbors and within five minutes of talking to him, um, the trees were gone basically. Uh, my, all my dreams have just fallen. And the reason for that was that, as my neighbor succinctly explained, nah, nothing grows here. And that was that. It was time to go to plan B. Uh, of course, I did not know what the plan B is going to be. And I spent another week in the forest, out of the forest, talking to my neighbor. And I uh, went back to the drawing board in uh, Wellington. It took about a couple of years to... Um, discuss more with my neighbor and uh, to establish an excellent relationship with the Kauri Coast uh, Dock Office. And that's when Plan B became Plan A and the new plan was to um, go into uh, conservation and try to protect the forest. At least the trees were there, I didn't have to plant anything, you know. And this is how our uh, nature sanctuary started. It uh, took a while to, um, to set it up. Um, we decided to go for the mainland island concept, which is something that has been pioneered in the 90s, I believe. So a mainland island, in our definition, is a place where there is extremely intensive uh, pest control. And that translates into a grid of 75 meter by 75 meter. So what that means we had to cut uh, tracks 75 meters apart and install bait stations, we use fill proofs uh, 70 meters apart. So that's how we end up with a grid of 75 by 75 with a trapping line around it, internal trapping lines as well. And uh, we are targeting possums, rats, stoats, cats and ferrets, which we don't have. Uh, it took about five years to uh, come up with the grid system, cut up a uh, actually cut up the grid system. The reason it took so long is that, as you can see in the picture next to the video, to the webcam, it's quite a wild forest. It seems like 40% of that forest is just supplejack. Uh, another 20% is kia kia, and uh, there are some trees too between the tall ferns. So it's quite unforgiving territory. It's not flat at all. It's really uh, up and down. But uh, with the help of volunteers, after five years, we have managed to, um, to establish this uh, grid pattern. We also uh, set up a rodent monitoring uh, network, a possum monitoring network. And we also set up for uh, lizard monitoring, fresh water fish monitoring, uh, bat monitoring, and we are going to work on, um, on snail monitoring or, or invertebrate monitoring. So a lot of has happened in the, in the last years in terms of development. Also, our neighbors have been extremely supportive and through talking to them, we uh, managed to get permission to uh, conduct conservation oper uh, operations on their land. And then we had, 
had excellent support from Kiwi Coast, from um, NRC, from DOC, and we managed to expand our area from the original 100 hectares, and now we're covering 1,000 hectares of uh, a mix of private and public land. Now, the type of equipment that we use is we're using field proof for our bed stations, we're using bait safe uh, for the ferrotox for uh, to target possums. This is in the mainland area part of it, and we are using single double uh, dock 200. We're using Steve Allen 2 for uh, cat control. We have a number of um, uh, live capture uh, cat traps which are doing a fantastic job. And um, just to keep in mind, out of the 1,000 hectares, it's about 150 which are the mainland island, and the other ones are buffers surrounding it. Um, the other um, 850 hectares, uh, we are performing uh, just stoat trapping and uh, cat trapping just to, to protect uh, uh, for kiwi protection basically. So uh, it had been a long journey to create the whole infrastructure. And what have we achieved? Well, the first couple of years were quite tough. Uh, we were out there cutting uh, supplejack and putting toxin out and we didn't see anything happening. Now, we didn't know what we were looking for, but there was definitely no change. And it was a bit disheartening, but we kept at it, hoping that everything is going to be okay. After about three years, we started seeing some change. And uh, the first change that we've noticed was that uh, the kauri snails, which are the big giant snails, uh, started um, appearing in a forest in a live form rather than just the shells that we've seen before. And so that was encouraging. About a year after, we started hearing our first kiwi somewhere far in the distance. Another year or so passed be before we saw uh, the first kiwi in on camera inside of the protected area. And it didn't take long to see uh, to start seeing a live kiwi. So that was quite, it took about six years to, uh, to go from zero, I don't think any kiwi used to live there, to go from zero to, um, to seeing kiwi uh, moving around. We have had two 1080 drops, I mean not drops but uh, pulses. It's all, uh, they went into the field proofs. And uh, these 1080 drops were about four years apart and they have made a huge difference in, um, in the number of kiwi. We are monitoring kiwi on a monthly basis in summertime. Uh, so we can tell um, from year to year that the numbers have increased, especially after 1080. Uh, we also have, have some dogs, which brought us down a few years in terms of progress. Uh, there were some stray dogs that uh, is, came out of nowhere and uh, we did notice a drop in, uh, in the kiwi cold counts after that. But uh, that was a while ago, so uh, we are uh, back up. As time has passed, we've also learned uh, how to perform different activities. So we expanded into um, bat monitoring, uh, lizard monitoring, freshwater fish monitoring, a little bit of uh, invertebrate uh, monitoring. And as time passes and we accumulate more experience, we have um, expanded our range of activities. Uh, during the lockdown, we had lots of time. So we also uh, moved into uh, software development. So we write our own software for uh, Kiwi monitoring, Kokako monitoring, and also sort of overall monitoring, including um, uh, bat analysis. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, 10 years. This year has been 10 years since we started from scratch with uh, zero knowledge. I come from a telecommunications background, so I had no knowledge of conservation whatsoever. But uh, things have gone from zero almost to uh, quite a fantastic result in terms of uh, all the species that we're protecting. Now, is there a moral to this story? Um, as you know, most people find morals, different morals in different stories. So yes, there could be a moral uh, about this story, which could be, um, well, better do some research before buying something. Um, another moral could be, it's uh, good to uh, do your best with what you have. 
and uh, although I never ended up growing olive trees and pressing my own olive oil I have to go buy that pack and save at least I can enjoy that uh, olive oil surrounded by uh, a lot of kiwi uh, calling around so all in all it turned out quite well well that's about our project thank you very, very much for your attention goodbye